for those of you who don't know, Justin is our chairman of the board. He is also the husband of Rebecca, who is sick. So he has been taking it this week, watching over the kids. But um, he's going to help us talk through just some of our financial updates. So I'll let you uh, take over a little bit. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So my name is Justin, as, as Jason said. So we just start with prayer real quick. God, I just thank you for the ability to be here together as individual Christians coming together as a community of faith at Mission Community Church. And as we prayed you know, years ago about Mission Community Church and then months ago as it started in September and now we are where we are and, and through your blessings and through your abundance and the people that are here, we're able to share today operationally where we are and what the future will look like. So we just thank you for that. We rejoice in what you've done for us. We ask and pray for wisdom and discernment over some decisions that we'll share here with the church and then that we'll make in the, in the coming weeks and months. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So a few slides, so maybe to give you some context of where we're at in a 10-minute window here, just so that you can see where we are. We'll start with financially where we're at, operationally, the contributions and the expenses that we have. Then we'll move into a section where we talk about two locations, because we're at the Sheraton today. That unfortunately ends in March, and so we do have to look for somewhere else to go, as you know, and then we'll look at, at the next steps. And so as you see on the screen here, our current expenses after a four-month number. So we've taken these numbers and multiplied them by 12. So you can see our yearly number for expenses is roughly $153,000 uh, on an annual basis, roughly $12,000, almost $13,000 a month that we need to operate on a monthly basis. Currently, our current contributions, when you take the four months that we've been in, is roughly around $24,000 a month. That is equal to about $288,000. When you do the math, we actually in December, thanks to your gracious giving, we had an outstanding December. We actually backed some of those numbers out to do the annualization because those sometimes are one-time gifts. And so we like to look at it at a, an annual basis that gives us a, a full picture. But with that giving in December, we actually bumped up our cash on hand that we'll have at the end of the year to be about $70,000. I and mean, that's amazing. If you think about where we started three, four months ago in September with zero, and then we're able to work together as a church, as believers in giving, and being able to now have $70,000. That's amazing. And so only God could do that through your giving. And so we wanted to share with you where we are at. And so that kind of helps us as we transition now to the next slide, that is two locations. So Jason kind of said, and, and I, I believe it, but if you build disciples, then Jesus will build the church. So it's not about what building we choose. It's about what building through a tool will allow us to do what we need to do in the, in the extant, in the community in which we're at and where we live. And so we're at, you know where we're at today. We're over here by 202 and 30, which is on the, uh, if you're looking at the screen on the right-hand side of the screen, the two locations that we're looking at today, one is the movie tavern. Uh, most of you have probably heard about the movie tavern now being new. Uh, we are in talks with them. And the other is a building called, uh, at 100 Arendelle Boulevard, which is just west of, let's say, Bonefish, that whole shopping center, going down west on 30 a little bit more. And so what we want to do is share two pictures of each place. So this is uh, 100 Arendelle Boulevard, beautiful looking building. Uh, it is a multi-unit space, so there would be more than just us in that building. However, there are two large rooms that are free and that would allow us to go in and build from scratch what we would need to build to, to have church there. So if you look at the next screen, we had Robbie uh, build out a little bit of a, a, a what it could look like. And I'll, I'll go through some pros and cons in, a, in another slide in a second, but at least pictorially, you can see what we would be able to do. Right now, it's, it's nothing's in there at all. There's no build-out at all in it. It's bare walls, a bare ceiling. So we'd be able to do something similar to this. So if you look at the next screen, then you guys know about the movie tavern. It's in Exton, in the heart of where uh, we're looking at, at trying to go in Exton. Um, this is the front page. Then if you look at the next, it's just the, the, built, the seats in there that we kid Jason a lot and say that he'd have to be on point every Sunday because <laughs> folks might get comfortable in those chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Your seats completely recline. Yeah. You probably like, could I don't know order, if that's a good thing. Yeah, order lunch. <laughs> but you kind of know what that looks like, but, but pictorially, we just kind of wanted to put that in your mind. So those are two places that we're looking at. If you look at the next slide, and I'll let you kind of look at it for a second. We'll start on the left side, which is the movie tavern. So what are the pros and cons of looking at the movie tavern? And before you get kind of crazy with, I can't remember all this, I need to write it down, we'll make sure it goes out in the weekly newsletter this week. But the movie tavern, so you can see the location is in the heart. We mentioned that. There's a short-term flexibility in the lease with going at a 12-month at a time. If we found another location that we wanted to go to, we could easily, we'll say, easily get out or move uh, based on that flexibility in the lease. It's new, it's spacious, it's comfy versus other locations that we've looked at that are already occupied. 
We talked about uh, the lower lease payment, or we didn't talk about that, but it's, it has a lower lease payment than, than the 100 Arendelle. And then it gives us the ability to hire today. So if we needed to hire additional staff, the one-man band, as we call it, that's Jason, we could do that. We could do that today. We can move forward and have additional staff. <coughs> the cons, it feels somewhat nomadic. So we, we move from, we're not in a, a, a physical, permanent location when you're here at the Sheraton or when you're at a movie theater. And for some people, that, that's a challenge. And so that's something that we would have to look at is that we would continue to have to load in and load out. So these things thankfully come in every Sunday when we show up, but there are people that come earlier, two hours early, help us load it in and load it out uh, after service is over. So that would continue and would continue to be a challenge uh, at the movie theater. Mission Kids, so the two, we would have one theater and then uh, for, for us, and then we'd have two theaters for the children. And to have kids in a movie theater that want to run around already as it is here, and they want to climb up and down the steps. So that becomes a challenge safety-wise. It's still a public location as this is, so we would have to be on our guard for the safety of our children. Seating capacity, the largest theater there is roughly 165 seats. And so that is what we have in here today. We can, we, on Christmas Eve, so you know, we had about 210 people in this room, and you know how tight it was. And so at a movie theater, your 165 seats, it's hard to add additional chairs. So that becomes a challenge as well as you think about the growth of, of people coming. And if we wanted to do a second service, so people like to see movies on Sundays, by noon we'd have to be out. So that means our second service there would be pushed to, let's say, 8 or 8.30 in the morning. So that would become challenging because it is not our own location. It's something that we're sharing with other people. Uh, but that's the movie tavern. So you'll get this information. Uh, anything you wanted to add on movie tavern? No, the, um, as, so we met as a board this past week and just kind of hashed out what we thought were pros and cons. There's probably more that we can all come up with but these were pretty much what we agreed on as a, as a group. So, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. And so it, it, we look at the movie tavern as a two-year place that we could be, one year at a time, but we probably would outgrow it in two years. That's with two services based on, if you look right now, we're, there's about 125 people that come on average on a Sunday, plus children of about 50 to 60. So you can start doing math and simply know that if we do all intentionally focus on one additional person, what happens? I mean, we're, we're busting at the seams, and... The courtesy seats that I laugh about that we all leave, that becomes, they come challenging and you have to end up being you put in there. One other thing I'll note that, I don't know if you've ever said this before, we talk a lot about as a board is that research shows that when a building or a room is about 70 to 80% occupied, people believe that it's full and people stop inviting other people. Or when a guest comes, they get challenged with, oh, it's full, I don't know if there's enough seats, I don't want to come back. And that happens, is, is like it or not, and that's just kind of reality. But we've read some research on that which challenges our ability to say, hey, there's 165 seats or there's 250 at Arendelle, but you know that that, that ends up when 70% of them are full, you're, you're full. So just something to keep in mind. Move on to 100 Arendelle. Um, so the pros, the location is similar to where we're at in the movie tavern, so that's a good thing. We'd be able to still be in the heart of Exton. Uh, we have the ability to do daily use of the building. Jason would have an office. The women could have their women's ministry events there. We could have Christmas Eve services there. We could have special events. It would be built from scratch. So those are definitely some pros that we would be able to go in and, and put 250 chairs in and then add more based on how we design it. And so we could do up to, we think, about 300 chairs depending on how we build it out. So those are some benefits of, of Arendelle. It's an attractive building. So when people come for the first time and they look at a building and they, they judge those things out on, you know, kind of judging the book by its cover, the building is pretty, it's beautiful. Um, and so those are some things that are, that are pros for going to Arendelle. So the cons, if we look at that, you know, the upfront build-out cost would be on our own. So we would have the cash that we currently have on hand, we would utilize some of that to build out the actual building. And so not necessarily good or bad, but that would be on us to invest. Uh, there is limited parking. So when we looked at the building, and you would think in, in Exton area, we would find a lot of buildings where we could go. There are a lot of buildings. But the, the uh, circumstances in which you have the rights to the parking lot become challenging. Buildings that have... Plenty of square footage, but you only have 10 spots allotted for you to use on those places. And so this here has about 100 parking spots. They're planning to build out more. Across the street, there's additional parking that would allow for us to have more people. But those are things when you do two services, you have to share the parking lot. Logistically, it starts to become a challenge. So that's a somewhat of a con, just something for us to keep in mind. Uh, because of the lease payment in our first year here, if we looked at the numbers, and I'll show those in a second, it does limit our ability to hire in this first six months to 12-month window. Looking into 2017, we think we would overcome that, but because of the upfront build-out cost and that, it does challenge our ability to have additional staff. 
And if you look at the building, because it is multi-use, there is a lobby. It's, it's small. It's probably smaller than what's out here or similar size, which when you think about we're done, we're going to have a, a place in what the design looked like where we could all mingle. But it becomes challenging to leave that area and, and the lobby being so small. And it's hard to, to explain without looking at the building, but it does become a challenge based on no <laughs> real lobby. It's a place to finalize this one that we could be for three to six years. Based on the lease terms that we would do, it would be a three-year lease and then the option to extend. And we believe we could stay there because to do a second service could be on us. It could be at any time. We wouldn't have to be out by a certain time. So those advantages are definitely there uh, for us to move to Arendelle. Uh, so, so let's look at the next slide. So these are the financials um, based on where we're at. So just focus on the left side, the movie tavern. So it's roughly $4,000 a month, very similar to where we're at here today. Uh, which becomes an annual number of $48,000. There are no upfront expenses, which becomes a total cost of the building of about $48,000. So that's where we're at today. If you go to the right-hand side on Arendelle, it's roughly $10,000 well, $10, a month. That's gross. That's all in with taxes and everything. So it becomes a $120,000 annual number. So you can kind of see where we're at there. Our upfront expenses. So since it is, uh, we've had some people come in and look at it with us, contractors and that including chairs and including the build out, we think roughly right now it's about $45,000. And so once we would finalize some of those numbers, we would know for sure, but that's where we're at right now, which makes the first year roughly $165,000 to go to Arendelle. So let's go back to the left side of the movie tavern. If you go down and, and finalize the numbers, current expenses at what we shared earlier, 153,000, if we added an additional staff, and we started our outreach. So something that when you look at a healthy budget, 10% is in savings, 10% is in outreach or giving to other people. And so those are some numbers that we've begun to look at in our budget for next year that we want to begin to do. And you see those on both screens. Of $30,000 because we believe that our, our monthly income is roughly around 300,000. I shared it earlier, it was around 288. And so that kind of gives you some of those numbers with a yearly projection of expenses of around $23,000 a month or $281,000 with the additional staff, we still have savings of about $21,000. So I know it's like, whoa, that's a lot of stuff that you just said, but $21,000 is what we end up with at the movie tavern and then uh, with the additional staff. If we move to Arendelle, just so you kind of see the numbers, uh, the $153,000, we mentioned we could not have additional staff right now, but we continue with the outreach. Then your yearly projection becomes $303,000, which basically we become flat with our ability in our budget today. So that, again, these numbers will be out on the newsletter. You'll be able to see them. Um, but at least kind of gives you an idea of where those are. And so you're probably looking like, okay, well, what, so those look great. What does that mean? And so what we believe is that your feedback is vitally important in what we do in terms of the decision that we go in. And, and it's really important for us to hear where your head is and where are you at with any of the decisions. So you've all made the choice and the investment to come to the Sheraton and be at a place like this at Mission Community Church. And so is your head at, I'll stick with the movie tavern, we should go there. Or is your head at, I want to be somewhere permanent where I can invite more people and we want to go to Arendelle, knowing that financially we would be tight and it may require all of us to have to dig a little bit deeper, be a little bit more uh, committed to, to giving. Those are just some things to think about. But as you kind of close out here uh, and, and you go to the next slide, uh, just a, a few questions. So where are you at in your journey with MCC, so with Mission Community Church? And I don't know where that is, and you know where that is. You've been coming since we started. You just came for the first time last week. I, I don't know, but you kind of know where that is, and you know where in your heart you believe the vision of what Jason shared and where that matches with what you believe and where you're going. How will you help expand the sphere of influence? So we are in this circle today, and I say that often, is that we're in the circle. We know what it's like to be in touch with God. We know what it's like to be in community of faith with believers that you get that feeling every week when you leave and that excitement, but there are people out there that don't have that. And how do we go and, and expand that sphere of influence that we have and what tool in terms of a building allows us to do that? And so that's kind of how I end uh, that question. So next steps. So Jason sends out the weekly email. It's called the e-newsletter. Hopefully you're getting it. If you're not and you don't, and you don't believe your email address is on there or if you have issues, please see the well, one of us or the information desk right outside here at the end. Provide us with your name and your email address so that you get this week's newsletter and the ones that continue to come out. But this week we'll have a link to a survey just to get your feedback. We want to know what you have to, to say about kind of what we've shared. We're going to give you some time to pray about it and, and uh, really think through where are we at today and where do we want to go tomorrow. 
And so that link will come out roughly Tuesday or Wednesday of this week in the newsletter. And so we just ask you to pray about it, review the information, and make sure that we have your email address. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so that's kind of where we are right now. We are in a really good place. I mean, you would have asked me back in September how we would be doing. I, mean, I, was, I was, Colleen and I were worried about finances. Like, oh, what are we going to do? But God provides. And that has always been our, when we did those vision meetings throughout the summer before we launched the church, one of the things that we always said when it came to finances is that God will supply all of our needs, and not just in finances, but in every area of life, God will supply our needs. We are not wanting to take on debt, so we're in a position where we don't have to do that. You know, from a cash flow standpoint, like Justin said, we have about 70 grand in the bank right now, so that allows us to be able to even have this conversation, which much of that comes from, from you all and being generous, and so I thank you for that. Um, with us being small, it allows us to get your input, and so we really do want your input. We want you to pray with us, pray for us, and then as that survey comes out, don't hold back. <laughs> We'd love to have your thoughts on it and just help us determine and process and continue to pray where, where God wants us to be. Um, these, both of these locations are temporary. N not one is, is long-term. Um, the one is shorter versus the other, but they, we both, or all of us agree that these locations are, are both temporary. So it's, as we look into the next season locationally as a church, just keep that in mind where none of these are going to be our permanent facilities. And then, uh, yeah, we just wanted to be open and, and see what God does with it. So we invite you to pray along with us. Thank you.